So all of the compounds we've dealt with were ionic compounds. And they were all made up of a metal joined with a non-metal of some kind. Now, when you have non-metallic compounds, things that are made up of two non-metals, like these examples right here, then the naming is a little bit different, but it's, it's pretty easy to get the hang of. What you do, you take the full name of the first with a prefix added onto it. That prefix tells you how many of the atoms that you have. So for instance, a prefix for if you have two atoms would be di. If you have five atoms of whatever, it would be penta. And so this is a good thing to just uh, go ahead and memorize. It's not that hard. You should already know mono di and tri, uh, and then the rest of them just uh, come along. So the only time that you don't put a prefix in front of this one is if it's one. Then you don't put mono. However, if the second one, if the second atom has one atom, then you do put the prefix. So just remember that, okay? So with the second atom here, right, all these second atoms, you take the base name, drop the last syllable, and add I, just like we did with the ion. So uh, you should be pretty familiar with that already. But the only difference is with the non-metallics, you add the prefixes there. And the full name stays exactly the same. So I think the best way to go over this is just do these examples. So, okay, that's the phosphorus atom, and that's the oxygen atom. So I'm looking here, and I see, okay, there is a number here. If it was just one, then I wouldn't need a prefix for the first one. So if there is, I need a prefix. And the prefix for that is tetra. So I'm going to write tetra phosphorus pH. Tetra phosphorus, because it's a full name. And then the prefix for this, hexa, and that's oxide, okay? So because we drop the ending, that's oxygen, we drop the ending, we have I, it would be O X I D E, but it's kind of hard to say hexa oxide. So we drop the A as well. And it's hexoxide. And that, you could just tell, it, there's no real, I mean, I'm not going to give you a rule for when to use it and when not. It's pretty much common sense. You know, if you have hexa oxide, that sounds weird. So generally, if there's this, these all end in vowel. If this begins with a vowel, then you drop the last vowel. So you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's do this one. That's sulfur. Sulfur. And that is the prefix for that, since there's two, it's going to be di. So di sulfur. And then there's also two there, so that's going to be di and then chlor. So that's the base, chlor, I. Disulfur dichloride. Now, here we go. It's another phosphorus. It's again tetraphosphorus. And here we go. So we have three is tri. So we have tri and then sulf, because that's the base. The base name. And then we Drop the ending and add I. So that's tetraphosphorus trisulfide. Now the final one we have is going to be di because we have two. So di nitrogen. Di nitrogen. And then we have let's see, four tetra. But tetraoxide would sound weird, so tetroxide. I think. <laughs> Let me just double check. Is yes, tetroxide. 
So instead of having the A there, because then you'd have two vowels right next to each other, it kind of sounds weird. So this is pretty much straightforward. Um, I can't think of when it gets weird, or if it gets weird. I, I think it's, it's pretty easy to handle. So let's do a quick example. Let's say we have this. That's water. But how would we name it with this? Because we have two non-metals, right? So, okay, the first full name would be hydrogen. And since it's not a one, in the first one we have to put di here. Because di is for two, so dihydrogen. And then the prefix for this, since it's one, it's mon. And it should be mono, but it's not going to be monoxide, because we're going to drop that O. Monoxide. So, there you go. I think this is pretty much straightforward. And uh, it should be pretty easy for you.